six Easter home decor DIYs are coming up in today's video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. I'm often crafting multiple projects at the same time. And as you can see, I'm staining a small wood box that I got from Dollar Tree. At the same time, I stained some other items for other videos. You know, sometimes crafting is messy. So I just figure it makes sense for me to make one mess instead of several messes. And anyway, so my technique for staining varies. Sometimes I paint it on and then sometimes I just kind of pour it on, but I always wipe it off with a damp scrap piece of cloth. And I know some use baby wipes and that works good too. And I try to use gloves, especially when I'm using Waverly Wax in the color Antique, because it just seems hard to get off my hands, like it stains it. <laughs> so. And by the way, today's video is part of a monthly open playlist that I host with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY. This month's theme is Easter or spring, and I'm gonna have a link to the playlist and Sarah's channel in my description box below. Now I have four wooden bunnies that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm not sure what happened to the footage, but I had just glued on some craft paper that had bunnies on it. I love the print and I thought it was so cute. So as I said, I have four of them and I'm gonna be attaching them to all four sides with hot glue. And I set the box upright and then I attached the bunny so that it's you know, even with the box. And if you haven't figured it out yet, this is a planter. I added some green floral foam and then added some floral picks that I got from Dollar Tree to complete the DIY. I love how this turned out. It is super cute and I feel like you can really change up the look depending on the florals that you use. Crafty DIYs on a Budget is my Facebook crafting group that I have with Sarah from GGB DIY. We share lots of fun projects and the link is going to be in the description box below. So I hope you check it out. Now these two little bunnies are something that I actually cut out myself. As I said earlier, I just pour on some Waverly Wax in the color Antique and then I use a damp scrap piece of cloth to wipe it off. And I try to wear gloves to protect my manicure because those ain't cheap. <laughs> and here's a tip for you if you're going to use gloves. It's easier to put on if you put baby powder on your hands first. They go on so much easier. Now these are just going on my tear tray, but I did want to add a bunny butt. <laughs> I tried some tiny pom-poms, but that didn't look right. And then I tried some cotton balls and I just couldn't get those to look right either. I even tried using some pom-poms off of a garland that I got from Hobby Lobby. Wasn't working. I ended up using a pearl bead that I got from Dollar Tree. And I love how these turned out. I'll be totally honest. I don't know how well that pearl is going to stay attached, but at least for now it's working fine and looks super cute. DIY number three is going to be a book stack and I have been loving the tiny book stacks that I've been seeing. So I'm just using these three pieces of scrap wood to make it. Now I didn't even trim these up. I just used, you know, quote unquote, the good side for this project. And again, I'm using Waverly wax and the color antique to stain these. And I'm just really loving the neutralness of that color and how it adds warmth to the palette in my house. Anyway, I'm also trying not to be too messy since I'm not wearing gloves. I did use my Cricut to cut out some decals for the book stack and I just transferred them on. Two 
To put it all together, I am just going to hot glue the book stack to itself. And it is a little tricky since these pieces are uneven, but I just use the good side, you know, the side with the decals as my point to line everything up. Now y'all know I have to add some twine. I just think it makes it look cute. I love that you can turn scrap wood into something super cute. And I just added a jute twine bow to the top and that finished off this project. A couple of videos ago, I used to rub on transfer from Dollar Tree that I thought was so pretty. And luckily I had purchased another one at the same time. And that's the inspo behind this piece. I got this bamboo mini cutting board from Dollar Tree and I'm painting it white. Now I thought that the transfer covered the entire surface and it doesn't, and that's okay. I just try to center it as best as I can. I then take my handy dandy Pampered Chef scraper tool to rub the transfer on and uh, rub the transfer decal onto the cutting board. And when I think I'm done, I slowly lift it up because if I notice an area that didn't transfer over well, I can just lay it back down and then rub on it some more. So let me tell you all about the feet I'm using for this riser. I had gotten this vintage spice rack and I used the rack for some of my paints, but the actual spice jars I've used in various DIYs. And I kept all of the lids because I'm a craft supply hoarder and I took off the rubber, you know, sort of plasticky part that seals the spice jar. And I was left with these little glass pieces and I thought they would make like really cute feet on a riser. So I originally tried to hot glue them on, but those suckers popped right off. And then I tried using E6000 and so far it's been holding up well. This is how it turned out and I love it. I love the feet that I used and I really love the rub on transfer. This project is a keeper for me for sure. I wanted to show y'all that we are finally using our jigsaw. I got it a few months ago and had planned on using it before now, but didn't. And here Marvin is cutting out a bunny head shape for me. I'm giving the front and back a good coat of the folk art paint in the color Adirond Adirondack. Um, I'm just going to give up saying it and from now on I'm just going to say white. I'm taking the color barely pink and filling in the ears. And I've got a bit of water because sometimes the paint feels a little too thick or heavy. so. I just think it might need a little bit of water to kind of make it flow better. I'm taking a sponge brush that you would probably use for like a stencil or something and I'm making the bunny's cheeks and I'm using my finger as a guide because I would actually already tried to paint this once and the cheeks were in the wrong place so I had to start over. I'm taking a pink pen, a black one, to add the eyes. And for the nose, I'm taking a small bead and I'm painting it with a combination of the barely pink and another pink. And I don't, I don't remember the color. I know it's just like a deeper pink so you can tell the difference in the color of the cheeks and the nose. And I'm using that same black paint pen to create the whiskers. And I just use a little dab of hot glue to attach the nose. This guy turned out so cute and I especially love that Marvin is the one that created the wood piece for me. Back with the jigsaw for DIY number six, which is also our final DIY and I want to mention I know some are afraid to use power tools but they really aren't that hard. I cut out a few things and I feel pretty comfortable doing it now and I think it just takes some practice and knowing that it may not come out perfectly but that's okay. It's part of the charming character right? <laughs> 
I do stain it with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. And as you can see, I had way too much stain on. And that's one reason I try to remember to wear gloves so I don't get my hands all messy. And I'm taking <laughs> white paint <laughs> and painting in two rectangles on the bottom portion. Now I saw a similar sign, but I can't find my pick where it was, so I can't really give credit or anything, but I'm doing this from memory then. And I'm not painting the whole thing and I'm not painting all the way to the edge. Now the top portion is supposed to be the carrot, and although when I just looked at it, it could probably be turned into a pineapple if I wanted to, but I'm painting the carrot portion orange. and I'm painting the leaf part green. I did cut out a decal using my Cricut that says carrots for sale and I'm transferring that on. And I'm going back in with a black paint pen to add some detail to the carrot. Would this be complete without a jute twine bow? No, no it would not. <laughs> I just love how this turned out. Marvin and I are getting better at using the jigsaw and I can't wait to see what other projects we create together. Thanks y'all so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. And I hope that you enjoyed today's projects. The link to the playlist is going to be down below. So check that out as well. And don't forget if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's our gray house, but just don't follow me in real life though because that's creepy. Bye.